for for those who are watching how Indonesia from a lonely position on ASEAN human rights body and on democracy uh, uh, managed to turn the ship around with regard to the other nine right uh, so so that took some uh, some diplomatic skill obviously right? uh, what what were the lessons from I mean from from how you were able how Indonesia was able to turn that ship I'm, I'm sure uh, bullying was not used uh, of course uh, uh, so what, what what was used uh, what, what, what can we learn from from that uh, episode yeah. I strongly believe that uh, good ideas mm -hmm. good concepts matters mm -hmm. in diplomacy mm -hmm. uh, and Number two, don't afraid to be alone. Mm -hmm. If you are sh you're convinced that your concept is good. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a acrimonious debate within ASEAN at the time? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My colleagues cynically said Indonesia to propose uh, democracy and human rights in ASEAN. Look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't forget this idea comes came only two or three years after reformasi. Which was a mess. <laughs> Which is a mess. <laughs> yes. When we talk about democracy, there, are, oh, there were unruly demonstrations, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Dayak, uh, and, and communal conflicts. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, because of economic crisis, still hungry. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. have difficult to have access to food. Mm -hmm. Here we are. And mm -hmm. I would say diplomacy was too early to mm -hmm. project these democratic values to ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ideally, ideally, perhaps after 2004, when we successfully organized presidential direct election, and more uh, in terms of timing, perhaps in 2010, when we have proven that thousands of hundreds of local elections went well, likewise, two democratic, I mean, president's direct election went very well, that's the right time. But uh, by 2002, three years after the beginning of reform, I strongly believe that, yes, we were still unruly, but our people began to enjoy their freedom. And no one would be in a position to withdraw, no government would be in a position to withdraw the freedoms that the be people have enjoyed. So mm -hmm. that's why I, I strongly believe on a steady course mm -hmm. on democratic process at home, should not prevent us to start uh, thinking of the promotion of democracy in ASEAN. Mm. If if the Americans were to promote democracy in other regions, they would be accused of regime change, right? How did Indonesia uh, not be seen uh, at the time uh, of uh, wanting uh, to promote regime change? I mean, there was no discussions. Uh, of that at all, and we were not accused of that at all. Yeah. So, but how did you uh, how did you manage that? Well, that <coughs> when people talk about democracy, well, things of Westminster democracy mm -hmm. or Capitol Hill democracy, mm -hmm. I use more softer approach. Mm -hmm. I like to quote the definition of democracy uh, by Professor Nobel laureate philosopher Amartya Sen. Mm -hmm. He says democracy in terms of substance is a continuous process of dialogues mm -hmm. or public reasonings on matters of public interest. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about Westminster or mm -hmm. uh, Capitol Hill, but rather a, a, a process of continuing process of dialogue, which is mm -hmm. also Asians. Mm -hmm. uh, I said to my Western colleagues, yes, democracy in terms of procedural election, perhaps it was the invention of the West. But dialogue, it is also Asian. It was Indian, that's what arguments, the Professor Amartya, Amartya Sen's arguments. But I, we believe that it's also Indonesian's uh, values. Mm. So we are not introducing uh, foreign values here. We are reintroducing Asian values in positive sense. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why it was not in that context uh, introducing new values, we mm. simply uh, brought up the old values of us, mm -hmm. not only Indonesia, but also, uh, yes, the regime may have different, mm -hmm. but the values itself will mm -hmm. be there. Mm 
-hmm. It's always been there, but it will be there. That's why, uh, that's why, why I, I don't hear any mm. uh, arguments that we are uh, uh, promoting regime uh, change. Yes. yes. But mm. I believe from my own engagement with my colleagues, ASEAN Foreign Minister, well, they speak on behalf of the regime, yes. Some are member of the Politburo, mm. of the Communist Party. But I strongly believe, believe that man has its own heart. Mm. Kata hati. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kata hati itu yang, yang, yang mereka, mm -hmm. that, that, that the in the end, they said, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, may maybe it's also because uh, uh, there was a factor of trust in Indonesia uh, at the time uh, that we did not have any ulterior motive or hidden agenda in, in promoting this. And this maybe this is uh, something that added credibility to our efforts to, to push for democracy in uh, ASEAN Charter. Uh, is, is that what happened, you think? Well, Indonesia traditionally being mm. the largest member of ASEAN, mm. Indonesia never throw throws its weights around. That's true. Mm -hmm. I know uh, <coughs> Kisho Mabubani mentioned a regional groups in which the largest party plays, I mean, throw its weights around. No, it's not the case. Mm. The, 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 the principle of musawarah and mufakat, this mm. in making by consensus. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about majority and minority. Mm. Even minority few country which has, say, one million, mm. as long as they have an argument, will be listened by others. Mm. Uh, that, mm. That's why I said this is the wrong point of us. Yeah. Uh, take me to the, the issue of uh, non-interference, which is a key part of the Treaty of Amity on Cooperation and so on. But as we know, in managing regional affairs, uh, often what happens in one country uh, is of concern to another country and then we open up dialogue and they open up dialogue to us, they talk about their concerns and so on. Uh, do you think anything has changed about the sa sacred principle of in, uh, non-interference, at least in terms of how it's being implemented? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not only in terms of practice but also in theory, mm. uh, I would say until today, ASEAN still clings to the old and static concept of non-interference principle. Mm -hmm. Some even claim this as a sacrosanct principle mm -hmm. of ASEAN. The subject was, I recall, uh, discussed at the uh, Phnom Penh meeting of ASEAN foreign ministers. And that's what I said. I'm wondering why you are still cling, clinging to the old static concept of non-interference. I don't think you can say this is an ASEAN sacrosanct principle. Mm -hmm. It is there at the UN Nation, mm -hmm. United Nations Charter, Article 2, Paragraph 7. Mm -hmm. But the international community has interpreted, has developed um, rather uh, 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 dynamic concepts mm -hmm. of interference such as at the Second World uh, Conference on Human Rights in 1993, mm -hmm. there was uh, a consensus statement with all parties, I said that, in which there is a reference that gross violation of human rights is a matter of international concern. So why then you or some of us put the shield of non-interference for others to talk? not to talk about the human rights condition. Mm -hmm. we, I said, look at Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Even before you ask, reading your body lang language, mm -hmm. and we had problems like crisis in Aceh or in Timor and others, Indonesia always volunteered to explain. Because as siblings in a small family of 10, I said, not only we have a right to know mm -hmm. what's happened in mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. Not 
with the intentions of interfering in your domestic but as siblings we might be how we might help you we may explain to the rest of the world what something happened in our fellow members of ASEAN so that's why I introduced a new approach rather than arguing on the basis of non-interference but why not as a small family of 10 we, are, we should be open to more to each other mm. Uh, I recall that uh, following the incidents in southern Thailand, whereby 98 people were killed, they were piled on the truck, and 98 dead. I asked at the informal meeting of a dinner to my good friend and colleague, Foreign Minister of Thailand, please tell me what happened in the south. Immediately, the shield of non-interference principle. Mm. I said, look, I'm not simply demanding. Indonesia has been practicing within ASEAN a very yeah. open-minded sharing what we have, sharing you, what you wish to know. Uh, so, and, and I don't think, even when you ask me what's happened in Indonesia in Istimo, I don't think that you wish to interfere. Mm -hmm. We are a small family. That's why rather than debating on this principle, which I labeled it as excessive interpretations of non-interference principle, mm -hmm. why not this family approach? Uh, I think in many ways on some they change, mm -hmm. on others may not. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, perhaps people do not understand that within ASEAN actually we all have open, uh, often have uh, heated debates. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Heated debates. Yeah. And it's not just simple exchange of niceties, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, serious. And, and, and issues like non-interference was, was at one point was discussed at length. Yeah, yeah I, I do notice that now uh, ASEAN countries, uh, especially the leaders, are less defensive about uh, discussing domestic issues. Yeah, yeah. Although uh, it depends on what what issues, what sectors. Uh, but but I think it's, it's a good development. I hope uh, uh, it's something that uh, will will uh, uh, be continued as part of ASEAN political uh, tradition. Uh, Indonesia was the last country to ratify the uh, ASEAN Charter. Uh, can you walk us through wha it, what happened? Is that just because of uh, the political process that is cumbersome or was, was the, our parliament uh, not ready and it needed some time to digest the charter? It depends on the systems. Uh, mm. in, in several ASEAN, it's simply a decision by gov the government, their governments. Mm -hmm. In our case, we have power of parliaments and that's why we need uh, better preparations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not simply a decision by the president to ratify, but mm -hmm. uh, it is a quite lengthy, elaborate process. That's why we have to prepare a good ground for it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In our case, the foreign ministry pre uh, organized, I think, around 80 seminars, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. academic, uh, hoping the academic, civil societies, in order for p our people to understand mm -hmm. what is this process of in transformation is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the nature of democratic process. Mm -hmm. uh, people might openly argue for or against ratification, as was the case. Mm -hmm. But eventually, uh, we did ratify. Number two, uh, yeah, we were glad to see others to, to to ratify earlier than us, and, mm. and uh, so I think Indonesia was not to be uh, seen as imposing. Mm -hmm. When Indonesia, the largest member, ratify mm -hmm. as this is has certain way to to to, to impose to others, mm. let us others. Uh, this is in line with the way Japanese uh, leadership's philosophy. Mm -hmm. To lead from behind. Yes. Uh, so, 
Pasan, uh, 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 we've come to the, the end of, of the, uh, this particular session. Uh, we're now 10 years into the charter, and we have the three pillars of the ASEAN community. Uh, how do you assess? Uh, obviously, not all of them are progressing equally. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which pillars do you think are moving ahead more than the others, and which pillars are still relatively uh, uh, struggling? Uh, understand that the economic pillar is having a hard time uh, still in, in terms of reaching its targets. Yeah. Ideally, as we discussed, that all those three pillars are uh, uh, develops in a balance. Mm -hmm. That's ideal. Mm -hmm. In reality, in the past uh, 10 years, that's what not the case. Mm -hmm. Not only look, uh, I mean, look at the blueprints of each ASEAN uh, community pillars, not only in terms of pages, but of course the degree of commitments of members, the ASEAN community, economic community is. Uh, more in terms of pages, but strong commitments for mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. governments, mm -hmm. much less in the last. Uh, mm -hmm. It's on the, the, the political and security community. Mm -hmm. And from the very beginning, it is the most sensitive. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but that's why, uh, in my view, there is a need to strengthen the political commitment for us. Charter is a higher political and legal commitment of states. Mm -hmm. Well, they are committed by ratifying this charter. They should be also consistent in terms of implementations. Uh, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's easy saying, but of course, understanding the configurations of political orientation. I don't want to say political ideologies particular uh, orientation of ASEAN the same time we understand I understand mm. why what's why uh, that's the case yeah. the last question uh, Pasan now 10 years after the Charter is ratified if you had to change anything or add anything uh, what would it be or you're just satisfied with the, the final product of the Charter itself Charter is the highest level of commitment, including the highest level of uh, format that binds all st member states. Mm -hmm. That's why don't change the charter too often. Mm -hmm. uh, give them the current charter uh, for many years to come and 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 they if there is less uh, there is provision in the charter which as of now are not implemented well change the blueprint because the blueprint is mm -hmm. the direct implementation of all those provision of the charter and because from the blueprint then plan of actions mm -hmm. uh, so to me if there is anything to be modified to change change the blueprint first mm -hmm. that don't touch the charter i don't rule out in the future there is a need but as of now after 10 years it was too early yes. to change yeah i remember i was in singapore in the uh, seminar and i mentioned if treaty of amity and cooperation should be adjusted to the present conditions, and everybody's like, "No, don't touch it. It's a sacred document." So, right. So, I guess uh, as a closing, we we do have three sacred document in ASEAN, which is the ASEAN Declaration sixty seven, the uh, Treaty of Amity of Cooperation, so the sacred the document, mm -hmm. and then uh, the Charter. Uh, all three, uh, preferably uh, eternal. Uh, don't change it unless you really, really need uh, to, uh, to to do so. But uh, I want to thank you for your. Uh, insights uh, and I hope those of you who are watching are more enlightened about the processes and thinking behind the ASEAN Charter and ASEAN community. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Badino. Thank you.